So another uh, group of kids from Zarka that I worked with was, was an all-boy group. And I made it a point to pick out one boy in particular. His name is Hamza. And he's special because, um, not really special, but he, he's blind. He can't see. Um, but he's brilliant. I mean, he can read Braille. He is very passionate about memorizing uh, prayers from the Quran. And he can recite a lot of the Quran by heart. Um, which is a, a very, uh, you know, special skill to have in, in you know, Islamic culture. Um, so I made it a point that Hamza is going to direct and write and his own film that the kids around him will help make and actually capture on a video since they can see. But he'll be the one in the driver's seat in terms of what the story is going to be about. And he wants to write a story about his life, about the things he loves and appreciates and what he wants to do with his life. He actually wants to be a doctor one day, which uh, I thought was very powerful. And um, we really had to push Hamza to, the kids were kind of just talking over him, even though they knew that it, we were going to make a film for him that was his story. Just because Hamza has a soft voice and he doesn't know how to lead, really. So through this special workshop, he was actually starting to take charge of how to lead people around him and how to engage. And you know, even though he can't see, it doesn't mean that he can't be a leader. It doesn't mean he doesn't have things to say and a story to tell. Um, so I'm really excited about how his film is going to come out. And, you know, the boys started realizing that they need to support and listen to him more and not just talk over him. Um, so that was powerful. And, you know, at the end of the workshops today, you know, the kids, it started out in silence. But by the end of the three hours today with these kids, there was just a roar and noise of creativity, of buzz and excitement and energy. Um, they felt empowered and they feel empowered and they have things they want to do and say and, and just kind of the floodgates just kind of just opened up. Uh, I'm really excited to see what happens with these refugee youth in Zarka. Uh, and if it'll be similar or different from the stories and the workshops that I'm doing in the Zaitari refugee camp, you know. It seems to me that the, the children in the Zarka refugee camp have less uh, barriers and fear of talking about what they've been through, um, which is understandable because in Zatari it's a very tense situation. Um, so we'll see how things pan out. Yeah, stay tuned.